Hello and welcome, my name is John Strand, and in this video we're going to be talking about RITA, Real Intelligence Threat Analytics, and how it can quickly do DNS analysis to find DNS backdoors in your environment. So once again, we are using ADHD. If you want to find ADHD, you just go to activecountermeasures.com, go to Projects, select ADHD, and then you can download it. On that virtual machine, once you log in with a user ID and password of ADHD, ADHD, you'll be able to get in, log in, and then right on the desktop, you're going to find our instructions document. Inside of that document, if you select attribution and you go Rita, so if we start at the beginning, close this out, close tabs. If I go usage, ADHD usage, opens the document. Then if I go to attribution, and I select Rita, it'll take you right to the instructions that I'm working through. Now, once again, we're using ADHD instead of Security Onion today because ADHD has this packet capture that I use in my Cyber Deception Active Defense class for various classes like Black Hat and Wild West Hackenfest built into it. So you would follow these instructions to basically get to the point where I'm at right now. Now, as part of following those instructions, I have already done the Julia Childs thing, and I have already generated an HTML output report from Rita. So, hello, look, it's done. So, we're going to go into DNS cap. I'm going to go into 2017. Yes, it's a little bit old, but trust me, TCP, IP, and UDP haven't changed all that much since then. We're going to open up this particular capture file. Then, we are going to go into DNS. Now, once we get into DNS, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk about. First, whenever you're thinking of DNS, the best thing to think of is a phone book, a very large automatic phone book that your computer uses to resolve names like www.yahoo.com or Google or Active Countermeasures or Security Weekly, whatever it is you're going to. Your computer has no idea what those things are, none whatsoever. So it has to resolve that to a number or an IP address. Now. When we're looking at those IP addresses, another analogy is like a phone number, right? It's like a number that you would call to get to a computer. Now, the analogy falls apart after a while, but just suffice to say that the analogy of name to a number with a phone book in the middle works. Now, whenever you have a back door, it can actually use DNS as that covert command and control getting out of the environment. One of the tools that works very well for doing this is DNS Cat 2 by Ron Bose. And that's in fact what you're seeing here. Now, in this example, you can see that the number of subdomains are 23,362 or hosts associated with nanobot ninjas. That's not normal. That's like if you think of google.com, right? You have maps.google.com, mail.google.com, you have uh, whatever, drive.google.com. Those are all subdomains or hosts associated with the domain, google.com. Now, in order for the DNS backdoor to work, it needs to make a full connection for every single DNS lookup. The reason why is if it just did www.dns or nanobotninjas.com again and again, then the local DNS resolver, which in many organizations is their domain controller, would just serve up that cached answer. So it has to set up a randomized request every single time. Let me actually show you what that looks like. So here you can see that we have 23,362 subdomain requests. That's just, that's bad. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop into the directory in Bro. We're gonna do some quick Bro log analysis for DNS backdoors. Now you can see our evil domain is nanobotninjas.com. And you can see that the file we're looking at is dnscat 2017 -0321. That's exactly the directory that we're logged into. So we're going right to the source. So Rita said something is weird here. So what we're doing now is we're actually diving into it a little bit deeper. What I'm gonna use is a tool called zgrep. Zgrep allows me to grep out a string inside of compressed archive. DNS cat was going to have a whole bunch of DNS queries. We're going to see that in a second, but it's currently all logged inside of bro data and that bro data is compressed. So instead of going through and trying to decompress absolutely everything, if you can see here is a whole bunch of different compressed files and there's a lot of DNS files there. What we're going to do instead is we're going to use a tool that can grep out of those compressed archives anything or any line that has the string nanobot. And we're specifically looking at any file with DNS in the name. So now I'm going to hit enter. 
once I'm logged, there we go, in the terminal. Here we go. Now, a couple of things that you're gonna jump that are gonna jump out at you fairly quickly. First, for a lot of people that are new to this, this looks like total, complete, and utter gibberish, and that's okay. So what I want you to notice is here, you can see that we have multiple requests for cat.nanobotninjas.com. But if you look, you can actually see that the, the string before the cat actually is randomized for every single request. That's because a DNS backdoor is going to have to randomize that request to cause the full DNS query to go all the way to the evil DNS circuit and back every single time. So there's lots of requests that are being made. The other thing that's interesting about this is if you look, the DNS server that it's talking to is 8.8.8.8. Now there's a couple of interesting things. First, this is interesting because it is Google's DNS server. That's kind of weird. Does this mean that Google's DNS server is evil? No, it just means that Google's DNS server is receiving that request and then it's forwarding that request to the Nanobot Ninja's name server. So it's kind of forwarding that. Now, the reason why this is important for everybody that does enterprise security is because many of your organizations whitelist everything that goes to Google. Whether it's www.google.com or 8.8.8.8, it just ignores it. And it does that for the purposes of resource utilization, monitoring network traffic on the edge of your network. It's just easier to say, oh, that's going to Google. Yeah, let it go and just let it run without actually stopping it at all. So this is important for two separate reasons. One, it's important because this backdoor is heavily utilized by Black Hills Information Security in our pen test to this day, or variations of this particular backdoor. Two, it doesn't really get caught all that much. And three, we have found that many organizations, their security products themselves are actually ignoring a lot of the traffic that happens to be relaying through something like Google. And you're gonna see this a lot more as we progress throughout these videos for things like domain fronting as well. So once again, my name is John Strand. If you have an opportunity, go down and hit subscribe. I see a lot of people that are YouTubers, I think that's right, uh, that say do that all the time. So I guess I'm going to do it too. And also, please check us out every Wednesday on Enterprise Security Weekly, where we aren't afraid to name vendors, name names, and actually say how well things do or sometimes do not work. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you in the next video. This episode was brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, specializing in pen testing, red teaming, threat hunting, webcast, open source tools, and blogs. It was also brought to you by AI Hunter from Active Countermeasures. The AI stands for actual intelligence. Need a threat hunting solution for the network? Check out AI Hunter. It is also brought to you by Wild West Hackenfest, currently offering conferences in San Diego and Deadwood, South Dakota. To check out the schedule and the speaker lineup, check out wildwesthackenfest.com.